Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan and in today's video we'll talk about a quick burn effect for Mentorflow using dynamic paint and wet maps. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get started. We'll start by adding this burn effect to our ground plane, which is just a simple 2x2 meters plane with a grass texture on it. To do this, as I said, we're gonna use dynamic paint. So let's start off by subdividing our plane, because we'll need a lot of geometry for this to look good. So this is what I'll use. Now let's add dynamic paint, choose canvas and click on add canvas. Now let's uncheck dry and in the output tab let's click the plus icon on the wet map layer. If I quickly go to the shader editor you can see that this is the material that makes up our grass texture. Now we can control our burnt effect using the wet map vertex colors. So you can just add this attribute and preview the factor. Right now you can see everything is black. So let's add in a brush. For the brush I will use a circle, scale it down and extrude it upwards just like this. Now I will move it down so it intersects with our plane. I will also add some loop cuts and then subdivide it to add some variation with the fractal slider. Now let's scale it down on the x and y axis, add in a scaling keyframe and go to about frame 25 and scale it up and again add in a keyframe. Now this is our basic brush animation. Later only the parts where the two meshes intersect will burn but everything that has intersected with the circle will be burned down. And so now let's also add dynamic paints but this time choose brush. Because this object doesn't have any volume we'll have to set our source to mesh volume plus proximity. Now if we go into the rendered mode you can see that because our distance is set to 1 the radius is very high. So let's set it to 0.1. And if we now play this animation, you can see that we get the spans. This is because we'll need to up the substeps value. The highest one is 20, so let's choose this. This means that basically our simulation is simulated with 20 frames for one frame, so it is more accurate. And now you can see that everything works fine. To actually now burn the texture, I will use two nodes, the hue, saturation and value node and a bright slash contrast node. Now I will turn down the value to about 0.3 and the contrast up to 0.05 or 4. If there is still too much color for you, you can also play with the saturation slider and set it to for example 0.5. Now if we preview this with the whole principal PSDF shader, you can see that now our texture is nice and grey and looks pretty burnt. Now we just have to control this with our wet map factor. To do this we can just add in a reroute node and reroute our original texture and mix it with our burned texture. Now the mix factor will of course be the wet map. Now you can see that we have to change the inputs. So just flip them around and now everything works fine. We can now use this as our base color input. And now you can see that everywhere where our circle has intersected with our plane, the ground is burned. And this is exactly what I wanted. So let's select all of these nodes press Ctrl and G and add them to a node group. You can see that now we have two input values but we actually only need one. So let's just plug this color input into our reroute node and in the interface tab delete the other input. Okay, the next thing would be to add in the grass and also have it procedurally burned. But this is a bit more tricky. For the grass I will use the scatter add-on but you can for example use any grass preset from Megascans. But these biomes just make it a whole lot easier. So, I will just add in the first biome, and because this is just a tutorial, I will only work with one particle system. Okay, now you can see that if we play our animation, only the ground is burned and not the grass. So let's select our grass asset, and also choose dynamic paint, canvas and add canvas. I had some troubles when upping the substeps value, so I will leave it at 0 or maybe turn it up to 10, but not all the way. Also make sure to uncheck dry and add the wet map vertex colors. In the material we can now add the node group before every color input and because the attribute is already named correctly everything will work just fine. Now but you can still see that the grass isn't burned yet. This is because wet maps don't really work with particle instances. So let's go right here and click on convert. Now every particle is its own mesh and we can just put them into a new collection. And now you can see that our grass is also burned. 
strangely I had to turn down the sub steps again and, and make sure to do this before converting all the particles because then the baking process had some troubles baking everything. But now it works fine. We can however, if we preview our wet map factor, see that we get a slight bending. We can control this with a color ramp and make it less noticeable. So let's click on this three icon right here in our node group, add in a color ramp and adjust it to our liking. We now can just duplicate this node group into here. And now the banding shouldn't be that noticeable anymore. Okay, that's it for the burn effect, but how do we now add fire? I want to control whether fire spreads with dynamic paint. But to do this, we would have to use weight as our surface type, and we can't have both surface types on one plane. So I will just duplicate this plane and move it a bit lower, and let's call it emitter. And now in the dynamic paint option, let's change it to weight, add the vertex group, and if we go into weight paint, we can see that this happens which is kind of what we want, but I said I only wanted fire where the two meshes are intersecting. So let's check dissolve and put the time to 10. And now if we play our animation, we can see that we will only get fire right around there. Okay, so with the emitter plane selected, search for quick smoke and scale down the domain. And now we can choose fire or fire plus smoke, inflow, and also some substeps to make our simulation more accurate. And now we can choose a vertex group, which is going to be dynamic paint weight. If we now bake our smoke simulation, we can see that the fire only appears where I wanted it to be. Of course, it will take some time to dissolve in the middle, but this is just because it is all simulated. For the shading of the fire, I mostly used the principled volume shader. I gave the smoke zero density, so it doesn't appear. And now I will just use an attribute node type in flame and with this factor control the black body intensity. You can now use math nodes to adjust the strength. And yeah, this is basically it. This is how you can easily burn down ground where fire has been. This is all procedurally generated, so you would be able to adjust the brush to whatever you like and everything will update automatically. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider liking and subscribing and we'll see you in the next video next Saturday.